Before the guide begins, here's a bit of a callback to the last guide made by Angered Meerkat in 2020. Uh, he started by going through the leaderboard and stuff and talking about the guides and resources on there, so I'll do the same thing. Uh, on speedrun.com slash jazzpunk we have a leaderboard for this any percent category that I'm going to be going through. Uh, it's really fun, very long standing, very good community around it, and I recommend you go and submit a run there uh, after you're learning this, if you would like to go and do that, or if you have an account already. It's all good stuff to go and do, and uh, later in the video and throughout the video I mention the auto splitter and load remover tool that you can use to get um, basically the time without your loads included, so if you're on a really terrible computer then don't worry, that's all sorted out and taken care of for you. In the resources tab on speedrun.com we have the most um, updated and sensible version of the auto splitter to use uh, with load remover by em64 via github. Following the link you get this little guide that's been written by him on how to install and operate the auto splitter and load remover with live split, the timing program for computers. <laughs> Uh, and if you need any help with it, then I'm sure we can on the Discord server, which I'll link. Uh, it's linked on the page, and it'll be in the description as well, hopefully, if I can remember. But enjoy the guide. Um, thanks very much. See you soon. Hi guys, Dan here. I'm going to try and do a Jazzbank Any% tutorial today. I'm assuming that if you are watching this, it's probably through a guide page, or maybe it's from a YouTube. If so, uh, then I am hoping it went well. Uh, what I'm going to try and do is go through the Any% uh, route for this game and try and show people who are new to speedrunning or just new to speedrunning this game how you can use uh, the Any% route to get a good run of that going. Um, and this is a route I learned a very long time ago. So uh, I'm, also, I'm also doing it from memory. I'm a little bit out of practice, but I think I should be fine. What I'm going to try and do is do everything at a, like a very much a learner's pace, because I'm sure there will be people who've done the glitch list for this who are watching this, maybe to learn how to do it. Uh, and I noticed that the, uh, the reason I'm doing this at all, sorry, I should say, is the old one by Angered Meerkat was fantastic, but it's a little bit outdated, which means that people now need to look at sort of um, runs of the game to, to get, get an idea of what to do anyway. So I thought I'd do a video explaining how a lot of that works. Hopefully it's helpful, uh, sorry if it's not, but uh, I'll, I've given it my best shot. <laughs> uh, and I'm also hoping that you're seeing this at all, it means it worked. Uh, yeah, to get into an 80% run, we, uh, you do need to set up a glitch, but I'll come back to that later. It's, it'll just confuse people to talk about it right now. Um, and it's a glitch that you do on the Kitek Resort day to skip uh, a little bit of a section. But all we're going to do for the start of it is go into the Darlington Station normally, and we're going to want to do... Uh, one of the most inconsistent or difficult glitches in the whole run comes right at the start, which is brilliant for speedrunning, because... It means that you have a. It's, it's what it mean, what it means is that if you reset later on, it's not too much of a, a blow. You, you you sort of think, oh, this is all right. Uh, I've only had to reset thirty seconds in or something. But yeah, what what you want to do uh, is as soon as you spawn in, I should say, of course, you want to have some kind of live split timer. Maybe you don't have to, but if you but if you have just got some timing method, I think that I did my first ever run on my phone. But you just <laughs> time it as soon as you do any kind of input. So you spawn about here, and as soon as you press W to go forwards. Uh, you start the timer of some kind, whatever you have. If you have live split, that's great. If you don't, that's fine as well. Uh, and I also want to apologise if my keyboard is a little bit loud. I've uh, tried to, I'm going to try and press it as softly as possible, yeah, honey, but my microphone is honey. not in a great position right now. Uh, I should go through some controls first before we get into the proper glitches. I know I'm interrupting myself a lot, but I'll try and have some timestamps to make it a bit more coherent. Uh, what we're going to do is get a mass sensitivity that's right for you. You probably want to just mess with that for a while until you get something that's good. Uh, I'll also talk about some other quick tips that you might want to have going for you. You want to have a high field of view for this run because it makes a lot of tricks a lot more consistent, which we'll get onto later, I'll explain when that when the time comes. But having a high field of view, if you can tolerate having a maximum field of view, that's probably the best. I, I don't really like that, but I have about this much, which works for me really well. You can adjust the slider with like your arrow keys, uh, if, you, if you prefer not to just drag the mouse around. I think it's about there, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, you want to have the reticle uh, enabled because it makes the stuff a lot easier. Unless you're an absolute tryhard and you don't want to bother with it, but that, yeah, I'm sure you, I'm sure you, nobody will be too angry about that. The quality doesn't matter, but if you want to get the game to run faster, that again makes stuff more consistent. Uh, at least I believe so. I'm, you may not want to take my word for that. My resolution's a bit messed up. Actually, ignore that. That's just possibly a reference. I'm not really sure. And yeah, all of that's been done. Now, very, very last thing, the controls layout. Basically, you have two activation keys in this game, which makes um, a lot of the things that you do a lot easier. You have to pick up a lot of items uh, very quickly and very precisely in certain places. It's nothing scary, of course. It's just the the way the any percent route works. It's just you've got, got a lot of little time saves coming in. So what you need to do, ideally, is bind uh, your action primary and secondary key to... Sorry, activate key to something that you can click both of very quickly. 
I do that with mouse one and two, so I can just sort of spam click on my right, left and right mouse, so that might work for you. Alternately, a lot of people do, do like using E and mouse one or mouse two. Uh, mouse zero, sorry, I should say, because mouse two is the, the um, mini wheel. A lot of people also like to bind activate to their scroll wheel, which allows you to just scroll looking at objects and then picking them up. That's, uh, that's allowed as far as I've ever seen it, so that's another strategy. That's particularly useful on um, the DLC, but we're not talking about that today. So yeah, just choose something that works for you. You want it to be something that you can spam pretty comfortably. I, I'll be honest, I, my hand does get quite painful after a series of runs, or has done in the past. But now we're going to get into the proper glitches and tricks and the route. If you play the game normally, you'll know you want to sit down here, but what we're going to do is, on the 100% route, we're going to do an out-of-bounds glitch immediately. And to do that, we need to jump on these airplane seats, and you do that uh, immediately as soon as coming in here. Everything is done as quickly as possible, which is the only time I'll say that. Everything you do, you see here is done as quickly as possible in a speedrun. That's pretty obvious. No one needs me to tell them that. You jump on the seat and then you jump on this wall after jumping on the seat. It's pretty straightforward, you just jump and then uh, shift, you just move left a little bit in the air. And then it gets a little bit complicated. To get further out of bounds we need to jump uh, just near, above, on above this wire. I'm not sure if this is the wire's hitbox or an invisible box that's just left there by accident by the developers. But you want to jump onto approximately where this wire crosses, the uh, or it's like in front of this blue air vent. Uh, you jump onto that and then you're on sort of an invisible tightrope with these wires. I believe it is these wires actually, but it's a bit uh, complicated to sort of explain that aspect of it. Sorry I fell off because I'm doing lots of moving. What you want to do is jump on the wall, jump on the wire, and then jump forwards, and then jump off of them, uh, and you sort of around this area. You can walk forwards pretty consistently, I forgot that actually. You just have to jump up here and then walk forwards. And then once you're here, you're doing, um, you, you're pretty much out of bounds now, you've done everything correctly, you can just jump off. Or, alternatively, you can jump over the wire, which saves you a little bit of time if you're doing speedrunning. Uh, I'm sure that's pretty obvious. If you've ever watched an 80% run of this, that's pretty much what everyone does. And you're going to want to come to about the edge of the track, it's sort of around this, this area, and fall down. Uh, it's a little bit further than this, so what you need to do is really jump off the track onto here. And now things get a bit complicated. You need to turn around 180 degrees-ish, and then move forwards in the air to where that white pill bottle is. I kind of missed it on purpose there. I sort of instinctively went for it in the end. I'll keep restarting with the chat to show you how a lot of things work. But basically the developers left the mission ult that teleports you into the next level in the void, which means that we can jump into the void and grab it in midair. There are a couple of different ways we can do that. You jump off the tracks here, turn around 180 degrees, and you should be able to see very faintly a white speck in the distance, hold forwards in midair, and then you can jitter click during that to try and grab it. Don't worry, I wasn't trying there either. And then uh, I'll show you another way we can do that. If you prefer not to grab it in midair because it is a little bit difficult, especially if you don't have sort of a mouse that you're really comfortable with gripping and stuff or holding in midair, which is what I tend to do to stabilize a little bit. And yes, you do you do hold W in midair or whatever you're using to move forwards. I'm sure this is pretty doable with controller. There are PlayStation 4 runners for this, and a lot of these glitches will work on the PlayStation. But the alternative method we can use is try and land on the pill bottle, which I've done there. It's a little bit uh, more, it seems more difficult, but it is actually a surprisingly big hitbox for this. So you have to land on it, and then you just jump backwards and just click, which makes it a lot easier to grab the pills. And as soon as you've got them, spam click again to take them. And there you have it, we're in through the next level. And I'll explain a couple of other, there's a very, very, very usual... A glitch that we use a lot of times throughout this run. It's basically called a save load, and what that all that is is you pause, uh, go down to save with your arrow keys or with the mouse. Uh, you hit save, and then you pause again immediately as soon as it finishes. Uh, scroll down to load, and press enter. And we're going into the last save. And what that does in a lot of a lot of areas of the game, it skips a cutscene, basically. So all we need to do uh, on this, we we need to use the save load. Sorry, I should say a lot of the place in the game. And the introduction cutscene can be skipped to using one of these, it's the first example. I didn't do it there because I thought it would be too confusing, uh, that amount of information, so I'll just go through it again, don't worry, don't mind me. Most of this will be uncut, but I'm sure it's something that you can have along in the background when you're playing as well, it's not like something you need to pause constantly. That might be better, it might be worse, I'm not really sure. Am I practiced enough to get it? Yes I am. I have done that about a thousand times in my life, it sounds depressing. But you want to press enter as soon as the loading comes up, scroll down to press save, then press load, then spam enter, and we're in the level a little bit quicker than usual, and that's sort of an advanced idea, but not particularly. Yeah, you'll get the hang of these save loads a lot, you just hit enter, and then you just instinctively go back to it, you don't even have to look at your keyboard. I also recommend rebinding uh, the X escape key to something like E. I'd never bothered with that, and I've never had any real problems with it, but it probably makes me like 1% less efficient. 
with my run. So yeah, you could really bond it to R, E, something like that that's near your forefinger. Assuming you're using a keyboard and stuff, I don't want to assume what people are using, but I'm assuming that you're using a keyboard if you're watching this tutorial. And then it's pretty straightforward, a lot of the Soviet concert stuff, uh, except for a very large and very complicated glitch, which I, I don't know why I said that. We're going to go through and do this uh, clock immediately. I'm assuming everyone who's watching this has played the main game because uh, at least a little bit or has seen the main game played. But we need to go and make it uh, 12 o'clock and we need to use another save load to skip the cutscene right after. So you just flick upwards to 12 and then as soon as it hits the bell, you pause, do another save load to skip the builders walking around cutscene. You know what I mean if you've seen this before. And then it will, uh, for some reason this is a really long loading screen. Not sure why that was so long, it's never ever that long, but if you have the load remover, which I'll talk about later, that won't matter either. It skips a little bit of a cutscene over here, for some reason it didn't do it very effectively that time. I'm sorry if you can hear the rain as well, it's England, what can you do? Uh, and then we've got the elevator down here, which I'm sure you remember. Now this, this next glitch will take a minute to go through, I'm going to do a safety save, or not a safety save, just a save that allows me to keep going back to this. I couldn't do that in Darlington, you can't save there, not sure why. Uh, just ignore this guy, he's a bit of an, bit of an annoying bloke. But uh, what you would normally do with this lift is you would just press the button and then go up. In glitchless, sorry, in glitchless you would do that normally and then you'd wait to go up here. Uh, and I'll show you a very, very quick strategy you can do. If you don't, if you want to not bother with what I'm about to show you, and you might not, it's really annoying, I didn't for the first couple of months. You can save at any point on this lift ride and then load and then you'll be at the top. It skips the lift ride. So that's one option and then you play through that normally. Uh, alternatively, we have another couple of options available to us. The main and best possible glitch that we can do to this will now be explained to the best of my ability. What we need to do is trick the game into thinking that we are both inside and outside of this lift at the same time. The way we do that is go into the lift normally like this, and then just come up against this rail as much as you can to the right. And then what we need to do is glitch inside the rail, and the fastest way of doing this in a run is you jump and then just tap, just a little, just a little tiny touch of D on your keyboard. And then you should be able to click this button, and then leave the elevator backwards. Uh, but I went a little bit too much into it, so I wasn't able to click the button. Tiny touch, and then you just move backwards, and then you're outside the elevator, but you're inside the elevator, if you know what I mean. We can, we still have a little, we still hold some of the physics of it. Yeah, it will make sense in a minute what, what I'm what I'm saying here. It's a little bit confusing. But I'll go through that again. All you do, uh, you just Point go the onto the this, on the jump, and then at the peak of the jump, touch of the press the button and then walk backwards and then we need to head into the main building as quickly as possible of course and go in front of this chair roughly this is very rough you want to stay about here about here like lined up with the uh, chair crease and whatever it's about this region doesn't matter exactly because what we need to then do is make a save and then load the save, surprisingly enough. And what happened is, if you position yourself about where I was, a little bit to the right, maybe I was a little bit off there, to be honest, then the lift should have, um, well, the lift's carrying should have teleported you to the correct place, height-wise, but not position-wise, which means that our position is actually where, right above where that chair was, um, and our height is inside this building. So what we can do is jump into a load zone that's down there, but basically all you need to do that with is... <laughs> You need to do the uh, elevator trick, as I've just shown you. Find the mailbox marked with chalk on the side. If it doesn't work, you can move a little bit forwards. That's a bit risky, though. Go forward about here, do a save load, and then we should be inside the wall. There we are. And once we've done this, we need to do. Uh, we need to jump through. You should be able to see just on the left side of my screen there. There's a little bit of a, another room. So what we need to do is jump and then swerve left a bit like that, and then jump again immediately. I didn't do it there because. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to explain where we're going. So you jump, swerve left, and then jump again immediately into this pipe area, and then we're in the load zone for the next level. And that, if you know the game at all, that saves a huge amount of time. It is absolutely amazing glitch that was discovered by LS300, I believe, or at least worked on him or him. I can't really remember, to be honest. I hope it was him, I'm not wrong. But this community is full of awesome people who discover stuff like that. That jump does take a bit of practice. I get it a lot now because I, I've done it hundreds of times. You don't need to do it hundreds of times, you need to do it a couple of times, but then you'll you'll, you'll get a good grip for it. And that is that how you do the whole of Soviet consulate with glitches. Uh, and that's pretty much it. A couple of save loads, and you're there. And we're now into the next section. By the way, you, you if you've got to this stage in the tutorial, you're now past uh, a couple of the hardest glitches in the game uh, to learn easily. And then the next level has two of the other hardest ones. 
So I'll um, go through those in a moment. But what I was saying before about the um, thing where you can save and then the lift teleports you upwards anyway, that's essentially just... Uh, if you don't want to bother trying that glitch, you can do everything normally and then teleport up with the lift and that saves a little bit of time on the any percent. There's nothing to make the mission go faster here, you just grab the pills as quickly as possible. There are one or two lineups you can use to make it you know, a couple of milliseconds faster, but don't worry about that for now. Um, this next level is Ikiaki Alleyway, and we can skip this first cutscene with a save load, a little bit unsurprisingly perhaps. We can do a save load as soon as you uh, begin into the level and the loading screens, the loading icon's gone, you can do a save load, which works nicely. And then we have to do a couple of really, really complicated things. Um, wait a minute. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Uh, I know, I know, it's going to be a bit of a pain, but if you've seen this on a run, you'll know why this is great to learn, because it's just legendary. Uh, and this is what's outdated about the tutorial now, I believe. This has only been recently improved on a lot. Uh, yeah, so we spawn around here. You can jump up these banisters to make it a little bit quicker. Uh, it doesn't make it much quicker. I think you can, you'll can. you have much more luck, to be honest, just jumping, just spamming the space bar up the stairs. I believe it's also discovered, sorry, and now I'm going on about minor details, that if you jump into the stairs and then hold space, you go up them as quickly as possible. So that could be a strategy, jump in and hold space. Uh, and now we're going to do a very complicated uh, super jump glitch that allows us to go all the way through like these alleyways and into the quest building and skip a subtask and skip all of this walking down here and it's brilliant. But it's very confusing as well. So I'm hoping my recording picks up all of the stuff that I'm doing in the next moments. But we need to use this bin. Basically what it does is it, if you click it, it goes up the wall like this. Uh, in such a way, it's very, very quick, very, very angular, which is very, very useful, as you might better work out. What we're going to do is basically uh, click it and then immediately jump on it, holding forwards. So that bit's uh, reasonably straightforward. You just have to click it and immediately jump, hold forwards. This is worth practicing a couple of times. And then it goes right to about here. This, uh, this sort of area where it's approaching the top of the wall. And what we need to do at that point is do an alt tab from the game, which sounds very high tech. All you do is hold, press alt and tab on this at the same time. And this is the complicated version, by the way. I'll show you a simpler version in a minute, uh, which you might want to start out with. All you want to do is roughly when your uh, reticle gets up to that point, you want to hold down uh, your alt and tab buttons. And then you're in this area uh, for Jazz Punk, and you've got some other applications open or whatever. Then you want to click back into the game, hold space, and you should be flying into the distance like this. If you've do, done all that correctly the first time, very well done. It took me years to get that. Not really. It took me a while though. What you want to do is just roughly when your cursor hits that red point for a, a quick like beginner's session. Alternatively, if you think you've mastered that bit, what you can do is do the same thing but a very slightly later which I'm not a master of. It's a lot more precise, and this is basically how you would get a world record nowadays. You want to go a little bit more outwards on the bin, and a little bit more forwards, and then you do it, and then you should get a lot less height. And then you want to aim, using this more complicated version, for the wall of the kitchen. If you don't get that, it's waste, unfortunately. You have to do a save load, and it's not much faster. But what you want to do is do the version that gives you the least possible height, and the fastest possible travel time to this area. But I'll show you where we're aiming for with the uh, normal version because it's a lot easier to demonstrate. Do it a little bit earlier than you think. There we go. And now we're in the air. And now when you're roughly over the restaurant or a little bit near it, like you think you could fall while holding W. Uh, sorry, that sounds really weird, but you want to make a save and then make a load and that cancels out all your momentum, which is really useful. And then you want to aim for in between the wall and the void in this sort of area between the microwave and the knife is the best possible place. So about there, if you can aim for that, that'd be brilliant. And then in order to get out of this fixed camera position, you do another save load, <laughs> which you can do at any point between the time that your camera gets fixed and when you land. Uh, it happens a little bit above this room and it's because going into this triggers the door cutscene where you have to take off your shoes. Um, and if you do a save load, you can get out of that. Uh, this is the most optimized version of this strategy, by the way. I'll show you a couple of less optimized versions in a moment. But you do those two save loads to do it. And then if you want to do the slightly more effective version, you don't need to bother with the first save load. You just need to be really, really good at doing it. That wasn't a good enough version of the launch. Let me try it one more time. If I can't get it, then I'll just go on to the slightly easier version and then go back to the more complicated version. No, I can't get it. Alright, well, I can't get it right now. It'll take a minute to do it. But all we need to do for the normal version of this is, again, as I say, you just go on wherever you like. And then a little bit earlier than you would do with the uh, final bit of the climb. 
when you're roughly over it, save load or a little bit in front of it so you can glide down, that might save you a bit of time. Then you aim for between the wall and the voids, between the microwave and this chopping board as well, and you want to be inside the wall and in the kitchen at the same time. And then just as you're about to land or after having landed, you do a save. And then we're going to do a little bit of a precise trick, which is we need to stay inside the wall here, that's very important. And I failed immediately to do that. Doesn't matter, I'm here. If you, if you want to and you're not too bothered about having a perfect time, you can just immediately load a save if that happens. But we need to grab this fish, um, basically while staying inside the wall. Fugu fish, very important for the quest. And then staying inside the wall the whole time, you need to walk down here and then do a little bit of a swerve jump, like on consulate, to get around that bit of the wall. <laughs> Uh, and then we are perfectly through. We've done, if you know the game well, uh, you, you normally you have to collect lots of spiders to get this fish and go in the kitchen. This is faster than doing all of that by quite a long way. And then we do everything as normal. And you do the fugu on the, on the dish and stuff like that. Um, I think there's a slightly easier way of doing the wall skip actually. Maybe you can... Uh, whoops. <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing it wrong now. I think that's about how, how easy it is. You just have to swerve around it. Okay, I thought you could like straight jump, but you can't. Okay, you've got to swerve around. It'll take a minute of practice at most, don't worry about it. Uh, and then the really easy version of this glitch, if you don't want to do alt tabbing or anything like that, is you just want to jump whenever you think it's about right, and then you're in here. If you don't get the um, really lucky version, you jump through there, and then you jump through here and do the spiders as normal, and it skips walking through the alleyway, which is what people used to do, um, sort of 2017, 2018, I think. Was the uh, that was where that was the most ideal strategy. Uh, I'll try and show you the version where you. So basically, um, to get this big jump, by chance, occasionally when you're doing this normally with just a regular jump and no alt tab, you can get it. Um, but it's really inconsistent. No one really knows exactly when it works. I got a little bit of a boost there, but it's not enough to do anything for me. So that is a bit of a waste, unfortunately, for that. But now I've shown you this part of the glitch, it should be really easy to get onto. Sorry, I can load a little bit of a later save than that. Get the fish again. After you've done all of that, you're gonna be fine. You've got the fish. We're gonna get the artificial pin like in the game as normal. And yeah, sorry, this is a long tutorial again, but it's totally worth it. Uh, th this is the hard part of the run. A lot of the rest of it is very straightforward. There's a lot of minor glitches to go through. And other sections where there's nothing at all. So as soon as we've done all that, we need to go into the bathroom and grab the kidney, obviously. Like in the main story, it's pretty fast to run into the bathroom like this, spam click and then go backwards. And then turn, that's a pretty good uh, way of doing it. You'll get better at these like movement mechanics <laughs> the more you do this. And there's one final difficult alt tab glitch in this level, but it's a little bit more straightforward to explain how this one works. We use this little TV man, I'm going to make a save immediately. He jumps up very quickly if we activate him, and we can use that to fly over the buildings back to the start again. Very, very straightforward indeed to do that, but what we need to do uh, is jump on him in a very uh, specific way. So I tend to line this up by going between this flag and the TV, over here, and I jump forwards, tap of W, tap of W, little tap of W to go forwards onto him, and then you click, and immediately alt tab, press the game, hold W as you're coming up, sorry, no, hold space bar as you're coming back in, and you should get flung into the air like that if you've all done it all correctly. And I'll do that one more time, just because I may have explained it too quickly. So between here and the flag, jump, tap a W to alt tab, and then you click into the game and hold W as you're going back into the hold space bar as you're going back into the game. And once you fly into the air, just hold W a little bit and you'll you'll get onto this ledge. This is the straightforward version of this, by the way. There's a slightly harder version. Go onto this ledge, you jump uh, through here, sorry, through this little cross hatch area, jump down backwards and we're in the end zone and you skip a lot of the alleyway walking if you do all of that like uh, coherently um, and there is a more effective version of this strategy I should say basically where you fly over all the buildings and don't need to do any of the walking I am very bad at it you need to get a lot of height from that spacebar and I'm not good at doing it having a higher FOV helps and now I'm just jumping over to show you. But if you get a bit more height, I don't want this to go on for too long. If you get enough height to get onto this building or even over it, you should have to, do, you should have to jump like this. And then that is obviously faster if it's all optimized and stuff like that. So hopefully you are able to get the TV glitch. If you don't, it's only a loss of about 12 or 13 seconds. But it's definitely worth doing because it's another, you know, old time glitch. Uh, there's nothing special for the temple except for you can grab the little candle through the wall over here. 
roughly on this window, and there's another place you can do it over here if you miss. So the best thing to do is start into this level and just spam click into the wall. Uh, and that saves us time getting the candle over here, but not very much, don't worry too much about that one. It's useful to do. Light the incense and hit the gong to get into the next cutscene. Fantastic. All straightforward enough. <laughs> and uh, in a minute we'll be coming back to the glitch that you need to set up to do this. So I'm going to come back to the menu to do that now, um, actually. It's probably best to do that now. We need to go to Kitech Resort next, and we need to set up a glitch that will allow us to basically use save corruption to skip uh, a little bit of that scene. Uh, actually, it's quite a lot of that scene. It's quite a substantial time save, so I do recommend doing this. It's probably worth doing in just about every occasion. We need to, before the run even starts, load into Kitech, and we're just going to head on over to our room like we would normally do. And this is all the setup. This isn't part of the run. You want to do this before the run even begins, and you are allowed to do this in 8%, don't worry. I won't go through any additional glitches right now. I'm just showing you the basic setup you would do for this. Obviously, do this at whatever speed you like. You head onto the fourth floor and get this key card to get into the room. 405. And then we need to queue up the director's cutscene uh, on the phone like this. I like to make a save just so I feel more reassured. But you don't have to. And you just head to the menu. And then begin your run like normal. And as far as I'm aware, we can um, now just go into the temple and then it will work. But normally you would do the start this from a new game. And what that's done is the game now recognises, I think, that we've for some reason done that cutscene. It's a bit of a weird game in that sense. It's it's not super important the reason all of this works. It's quite fun to know about. Um, but the game just recognises we've done that, and then we can head into Kaitech Resort and do the glitch, like you would expect. Oh, it's dear me. Exhausting video. How's your, how's your guys' days going? And again, the old tutorial is very good as well. A lot of the stuff is covered, but this is a little bit more up to date. And hopefully, you know, I've explained stuff thoroughly enough, people will be able to get it. So, what we need to do, the map is, is just, you, just, you can go down a little bit and then do a straight line. It's about four bars of downwards and then a straight line if you want to be super optimized, but it saves frames at most. So, don't worry about this, just head to Kitech Resort, it's over there, across the Pacific. And then we need to do everything on Kitech like normal, except for the fact that we just need to head, we need to, uh, sorry, I'm doing things like, I'm not really thinking when I speak, we need to um, do a positional thing on Kitech as well, so the reason that any of that saves a lot of time uh, is because it skips the phone cutscene, but there's another thing we can do, we can basically teleport straight from our room down to here by queuing up the Wedding Quake cutscene here, uh, by activating the cake and then immediately stepping back so we don't go into the game. Uh, or do anything like that, and then we just head straight to the elevator, straight to the room. The elevator, there's a little bit of time save you can do as well. I, I might, um, do I make a save here? No, because that won't work. Um, so there's one thing you can do, you can stand in the gap like this, and then hit four, and then you can jump out a little bit early because you're in the gap, which is a good way of doing it. But the even faster way of doing this is you head into this and then do four, three, two, one, like that. And then the elevator should rock it up. It didn't work that time at all, sorry. It should go a lot faster. I'm not sure if it's actually that order, but that is the way that it generally wants to work. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if, I'll show you the um, strategy that I was talking about before that, because I'm more familiar with it. And they're very similar in speed. You only lose about a second if you're doing one I'm about to show you. You stand in the gap and then hit four on your keyboard which works to trigger the elevator controls. If you're on console, I apologize, I'm not sure if that's doable. And you jump out of back here, and you can jump out a little bit early. And that's all nice and stuff. Uh, oh, the key card holder is a little bit down there. That won't happen if you don't do any mucking around like I'm doing now. And then we head over to room 405, as you might expect. Whoops. And then we do uh, a series of things where we need to grab the briefcase, and then make a save load the said save and we're in the bar because of the wedding quake queue up and because of the save corruption we did before the game uh, before the run even starts we're able to sit down with the editor like we had done all the disguising stuff beforehand so that's a really simple glitch in many ways but it saves a lot of time uh, just because uh, we don't have to bother with so much stuff obviously you swap the cases get rid of this card and then the rest of this um, level plays out like normal. If you want any clarification on anything at all I'm doing right now in the run, by the way, uh, please leave a comment. I'll be happy to respond. I do see all of them, don't worry. Uh, we take the cocktail, then run out to the main entrance, and you just stand around here until you die or pass out from whatever. And that's how that bit works. Pans out, pretty much. <laughs> 
Ugh. And that's the end of Kintech Day. That's about as fast as you can get it with any percent. If you did a clean run through of that, it obviously would be. I'll, I'll link a run of mine that's sort of like my personal best for any percent to show you how all of this stuff should look chained together. And I'll put a card on the screen right now if you can't be bothered to go to the description or anything. Um, if I've forgotten to do that, remind me in the comments. <laughs> but basically, you just have to uh, do all of that save corruption on Kintech Day. And then we go to Kintech Night. Which has another really game-breaking glitch for any percent. I know, this game's full of them. It's lovely. You head out of the room like normal, and we're going to head straight to the elevator. And I'll try and explain how this glitch, next glitch works. It's pretty straightforward. It means we can skip all of the um, rear pool shenanigans and stuff cutscene, which is really long. So it's very useful for that. Also discovered by LS300, it's called Clam Glitch. And what we're going to do is basically glitch through the floor, uh, uh, the grass over there on the clam, to get into the wet works early earlier than we're meant to be able to, without all of the pig and stuff. So what we're going to do is go into the elevator, and then as soon as you hear his dialogue or see this menu, uh, you're both inside and outside the elevator, you just pause into a save load. Uh, and then what happens when we load the save is the elevator, We the game now treats us as being in the elevator all the time, which is a very useful thing to have in this. So what we need to do is press 2 on our keyboard, and that will be able to use the elevator controls and get it down to the second floor. As you, as you can see, that's just a demonstration bit. You can do whatever you want from here, particularly. And you just jump off the balcony, and you head over to the clan, and this is where the magic happens. What we need to do, basically, is um, press 1 on our keyboard, which forces the elevator down, uh, which actually, uh, it's a bit like the crane on the Soviet consulate. It forces the player down, which means we actually get forced to the floor in certain points on the map. And one of those certain points, if you want to be really careful, is this back corner of the clan. It's right, right, right about here. Press 1 on your keyboard. You should fall through the floor into the load zone for the works, And then, then you'll be done with Kitech Knight really, really quickly. So it's a very useful glitch. But what we need to do... The riskier version, if you're just doing a running at it, is you jump off the balcony, you hit 2 in midair or whatever. Just get it down to 2. That's what I like to do. And then you run forwards to the clan. And you press 1 when you're about here. And then you should... I don't know if I lined it up correctly, actually. If you do fail it and don't want to reset, press 2 again, goes back up to the second floor, and then you press 1 again. I should go forward here. There we go. You'd run right at the front of the clam, essentially, and then you get forward through the floor, and occasionally I have just not been teleported there, and it ruins the run, because this is reasonably far through the run, and you've already done the TV glitch, and the alt tab glitch for the spider bin, and the crane glitch, and the wet and the pills at the very start. I, I, I'm not a fan of messing that up, so I like to do the safety one, which loses about a second. Uh, the next bit of this run, I am not very qualified to explain, but I'll give it my best shot. It's the wet works bit, and what we need to do for this is this this bit requires a lot of complicated movement. So rip bit rate, obviously, because that's the way this bit works. But there are uh, a lot of optimizations we can make to the wet works. There are no big glitches in the wet works, but there are some optimizations we can make. This this wall is always like I love this bit. It's always great fun. I I, I could spend hours looking at this stuff. To be honest, I'm not going to. Hi guys, Future Dan here to explain a little bit about uh, the Wetworks t uh, tube glitch that I was explaining there. I don't think I did a brilliant job in the original tutorial, so I think I'll do it again very quickly. Because uh, there is a lineup, I just haven't didn't really bother with it because I thought it was quite obvious. But uh, what you need to do essentially in order to get on top of that tube and save a little bit of time with the gate opening animation is you begin in this position, you jump into the tube and go right to the back, and then roughly when you've crossed the platform, uh, like line-wise, as, as soon as the character is just above the uh, platform in the tube, you start holding W, and then you aim for just above this gate, and then it allows you to jump on the gate and go through the tube just like that, and that's the easiest way you can do it, just by crossing the platform. Normally, of course, what you would do is just go onto the platform like this, activate this little moth and go through the gate like that. So that if you do everything, you know, relatively optimised, the time save is very minimal. But it's certainly worth doing because as soon as you've got that lineup down, it is very difficult to mess up. You just have to remember that it's once you've crossed the platform, and as you can see, that's half a second, one second faster. It's in that region. And then for the rest of the wet works, I'll have a reasonably sensible explanation. Uh, if you can't be bothered, then just skip to the end of the wet works timestamp and try and stick to the side of the pipe that is the nearest to your exit. That isn't as very general advice, but if you don't want to hear my the rest of my wet works explanation, that's about it. Thanks very much. Uh, I'll see you soon. But if you are able to get on top of this gate, uh, you can jump right over it, and that's a little bit easier. Then my optimization for the rest of this is very poor, but what you essentially need to do is just jump right through these and then hold the right, left, up or down, or whatever it is, 
that gets you onto the platform as quickly as possible. I'll go back through and demonstrate this one again. All you do is you run, you land about here, and then you just jump through it, hold right to get onto the platform as quickly as possible. Face the next shoe as quickly as possible. Jump up here, and then you go through this straight ahead pipe, not the one on the right. And then you occasionally would like to, well, sorry, the ideal strategy for this one is you face right as much as possible and you get through this end bit and then you lose all of this shock from the end of the tube. This bit is super complicated to explain but if you play this bit a bit casually you'll know exactly what I mean. If you do that well enough then you'll be roughly in line with this. Next one, you head up here and none of this has names. Head right, right around like that. This one's very straightforward, you just jump forwards and then up, hold backwards so you don't end up flying through the tube. I'll explain what I mean by that, by heading down it again, if I can. Excuse me, there we go. <laughs> I think I may have caused a glitch in the matrix. All right, well, you, you, if, you, if you do this casually, you, you'll see why I'm doing these movements. And I believe you head left, sorry, a little bit long since I did this. And then you, I always crash into this wall. I know that you can avoid doing it by basically holding as much right as possible and entering the tube right. But if you overcorrect for that, you can occasionally go backwards in the tube, which does ruin the run almost every time. I also didn't explain this second gate uh, exploit very well in the first part of my recording, or the first main recording session, so I'll do it here quickly. You can also skip this gate, uh, which is, I should demonstrate normally what would happen is you just land on this platform, as soon as you land the gate starts to slide out and then you can go through. But because that isn't particularly efficient, what the best way to, the best thing you can do is go over the gate. It is a little bit more difficult than the first gate to do. It's very very similar principle, you just hang back and then you jet forwards when the, when you've uh, roughly crossed over this platform because it's the same height but you can't travel sort of directly across here because there's an invisible wall which I'll try and demonstrate now if I can basically I could just jump over there right no I can't there's a wall uh, but if you roughly try and weave around it on the platform then it is quite doable but essentially if you leave this tube diagonally once you've crossed the platform then you have a much better chance of getting onto it but because it is a further distance, it does take a little bit of both practice and good fortune. There we go, I just about got it at that time. You've got to aim diagonally and then just land on the very edge of it. And that does save a little bit more time than you might expect. Definitely more than you'd expect from the first gate. And then you can go on to complete the level. Back to the main tutorial video. That's just a lot of optimization you can learn from probably Ian 64 to run. Which I'll also link in the description, his world record has got a basically flawless how it works, so that's very ideal for showing that how that happens. But yes, it's just a lot of optimization on that one gate jump at the start, and then the second one. Uh, Darlington 2 is very straightforward as well, um, there's only one thing that we really need to do here that saves about 4 seconds in any percent, so it could be the difference between, you know, a personal best and not. We need to get a, a dialogue skip in this, so I'll demonstrate the start of this. Normally you come in here, the dialogue starts, and you sit down. He says we've got much business to discuss, there's a pause, and then it starts. And that's not really ideal, that's not the ideal optimization for this. What we need to do is go through the door as quickly as possible, sit down as quickly as possible. And then it skips a little bit of the dialogue. I don't know why uh, that happens, but it saves about four seconds, really useful. So I'll do it one more time, you just basically at an angle you want to go through the door and sit down immediately. I messed it up there, that would be, I, I would start crying in my self and percent I thought that was in for sure. You just flick right, sit down immediately. And I got it there. It's very quick sit down. If you do a one minute of practice again, you'll get it <laughs> pretty much every time on runs. Uh, but it's yeah, it's reasonably important that one I would say that's that's a bit of bigger time save than most of the save loads that we've done so far. So yeah, so that's an important one. Remember it. That's it for Darlington 2 though, and the rest of the run you'll be pleased to know is really easy in terms of glitches and stuff. You play it pretty casually, but there are a couple of important save loads. The most current route um, uses uh, doesn't use a save. Uh, sorry, it doesn't it doesn't use save corruption at the start of this run for Bachelor's Pad. We only use save corruption for Kitech Day. However, uh, there there used to be some save corruption that skipped this elevator ride. We don't do that anymore. So just head out the elevator as soon as it arrives. And there's a save load we can do here. There are lots of them on this Bachelor's Pad. So get ready for this. We're going to as soon as we start talking to him, and he says you must be the exterminator. Do a save load as we've done a few times before in the run. It'll skip his dialogue, and then we just head over, straight over to the sofa, get the TV remote, or the uh, Mirano Space Time Controller, and you get the director down with the Space Time Remote. If you didn't know you could do that, that's a little tip as well for glitchless. That's also how that works. Uh, for other categories, it's different. But there's no glitches involved there, you just go straight to the 
get remote no, and oh, get him down. Oh, yeah. It's all no, no. straightforward. And then we have to sit through this rather long no, cutscene, no, which no, there is unfortunately no real way of skipping. I mean, you can get outside of this room and stuff, but you can't complete the game without going through this cutscene and doing the sports to at least a certain degree of skill. So we've got to get through all that, I'm afraid. Uh, and golf uh, in this game is a bit of a nightmare for speedrunners. Uh, the world of, we, we have a lot of problems with this usually. The golf um, is a little bit more skippable now than it used to be. We don't have to do so much standing around because we can do a lot more save loads on Bachelor's Pad. Uh, yeah, it, it, the point is it's improved a little bit since the last tutorial. So I guess this is trying to explain some of that and explain how a lot of the lineups work. And again, if you have any questions about this stuff, I'm, I can try and answer it in the comments or do a separate tutorial on certain stuff. Um, if you want a tutorial for a glitch for us as well, I'm happy to do that, although it is pretty straightforward. It's just a lot of optimized movement. There won't be one but it is different, and there are one or two glitches you can do a little bit com controversially. So all of this is pretty much vanilla. You just want to get uh, the hole, the ball in the hole. But I would like to credit Deadly Lizard and Angular America and Joshua for talking about how to optimize this uh, section of the run quite heavily. Hello, it's Future Dan here to say I really messed up the explanation for the golf section on Jazz Punk, and I'm going to correct myself now as best as I can. Basically, basically what you want to do is, as soon as you've done this first hole, you make a save load. That bit was correct in my original explanation, which you probably won't see now. We just need to make a save load there, and then go to the second hole straight away, and then do the hole as normal. But what should happen, if you aren't doing this in a normal run and everything goes correctly, is you just... And don't do any saves to try and line this up, and don't interrupt it and stuff like that is you get this hole completed correctly, and then the editor is meant to stay over here, and you just go and wait for him to finish this sequence, where he hits the ball magically from over here, it's a bit buggy, if you do the first save load. As soon as he's finished, you're, you're able to go and hit the ball for yourself on the third hole, and that is the big time save section of this, and you hit it straight into the goal with that. I have some information about hole-in-ones, which I will now re-record, because it was part of a bad explanation overall for all of that stuff. So for the second hole, there is a hole-in-one lineup that we need to do. Uh, we don't have to, it just saves a lot of time if you do want to learn it. Uh, it's available in Eam64's video, where his guys have a pretty much perfect lineup if you want to try and learn his. Although it's a little bit confusing for most people to b be bothered with, including myself. So if you do want to learn the hole-in-one lineup, you aim roughly here between these two black dots, and use very nearly full power, approximately this much. Slam it into the hole like that, and... I missed it by a whisker. That's alright, it's roughly that. Maybe I was a little bit too far to the right of those two dots. And then the third hole lineup is very different in the sense that it very rarely works and you need very low sensitivity to get it to work ever. If you don't have a reticle around the ball, by the way, then you just need to, not a reticle, I mean an interactive circle or whatever, switch off your cue and back onto it again, which is a glitch left over from Patchless, hilariously enough. You aim basically as close to the wall as you possibly can without actually going inside the wall. And then what it should do is, if it, unless it bonks like that, which it does so frequently, as you saw maybe on my uh, attempt where I was explaining the sequence of this, it's meant to go up like that and spin around the edge and then go through. And then as soon as you get the ball into the third hole, you went make a save and then load it and then you head over to the stairs and do everything as normal, like I said. On with the rest of the tutorial that I recorded at the time. Basically, as soon as you've done that, you want to make a save and then load, and that's as soon as you get into the third hole, by the way. And then you want to head up the stairs as soon as possible. And that skips a little bit of a cutscene that the, the director does when he's sorry, editor does when he's walking. Sorry, I'm very tired. It's it's been a day. It's been a day for a tutorial like this. There is a little optimization you can make to this bit. You can jump off and then just aim at the steering wheel of this golf cart. Jump in. And then you just aim for the steering wheel and get into it like that. Alternatively, you can not bother with that uh, ever so slight optimization developed by Eam. And you can just head up the stairs like this and jump into any one of the golf carts like that. And it's very nearly the same speed. None of this flying is any faster than usual. Uh, you just aim it where you want to go and go there as the crow flies. That's pretty much the speed running side of it. Gravy race. Wow, yes. It's important to get this kind of down as a speedrunner. <laughs> But there's nothing particularly fancy you need to do here, you just need to put the gravy in, use the remote. And off we go! To do gravy race well, you kind of need to stay near the wall as much as possible. 
you just have to stay as much to the wall as much as possible, as I said. Turn a lot and then not hit the wall, because that is a big time loss. Just, yeah. And if you do hit the wall, it's not the end of the world. It's just you need to stay very close to the wall as much as possible and steer towards it, if you know what I mean. And my times for this are regularly like 46 or 47 seconds, and that's acceptable for runs. Uh, although the top runners generally can do 45 seconds consistently, and I am not just not able to. If, I, if only I was good at the bachelor's pad segments, I wish I was. Um, yep, yeah, it's close to the wall, there's not much to say about this, except for the fact that at the end there's a save load. And in that save load, we just have to do it as soon as the race ends. And then it skips a little bit of the cutscene at the end of the gravy race. And it also skips the walk animation to the golf carts. Jump in the red one because it's nearer by now because the editor uses it. And then we just... Oh no, he uses the pink one if he uses the blue one. Ignore me. The nearer golf cart. Head over here and then don't be alarmed by the fact that these headsets aren't here. All we need to do is jump over here and then make a save load when they're roughly in position to get one of the headsets. And they should appear out of thin air. Like that. Grab it and then walk. if you want to walk back a little bit when you're grabbing it, then it makes your position for finishing the fight a lot better. It's all really straightforward from here on out, don't worry. Uh, to do this quick, this bit as quickly as possible, you grab a chair, hop the net and beat him up. And that's about as optimised as it gets, really. As I was saying, you just jump over here before you're putting it on. And then we have to go and grab these uh, accolades for the editor. We, didn't, we can do this quite quickly by going up to the stairs straight away, grabbing this, grabbing the flowers. Going around here, we grab the medal, of course, you will know all of this if you play the game. Jump across here for the heavyweight belt and the tiara. And then we grab the... Ugh, it's the goons doing that. Sorry. Scroll upwards to give them to these two as quickly as possible on your mouse if you're using uh, mouse and not Q. You don't use Q because that doesn't uh, do that by default. And as soon as you're giving them all to him, so needle. And then we just jump across the bridge like we always used to. We don't need to bother with save loads because that would uh, put us back in the elevator. Which we used to do, but it doesn't save enough time to be worth it anymore because of the golf saves. Uh, which I somewhat messed up a minute ago. But we'll go straight over to here and that is basically the last glitch of the run. Except for one final save load. Head over here, press the crocification button because it's ever so slightly faster than pressing the green one and having the sticker fall down. A croc's got to do what a croc's got to do. Ever so I'm slightly faster. In my mouth now because and we're basically at the end of the tutorial. Thank you very much for watching it. We just jump into the mouth and we do one final save load. As soon as you've loaded into this, do a save load as very quickly as possible. And then you skip the fall down animation. And that is very much the last glitch of the game. There's a little bit of optimised movements in here where you stick to the wall. But other than that, it is basically the end of the tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for watching it. Um, I would like to mention in the credits, obviously, that there is a load remover for this game and an auto splitter in one that was developed by Eam64. If you want to get times without loads with live split, go to this big spam click, it's pretty straightforward. There's nothing particularly optimised about this bit, you might lose a second if you mess up. And that is the any percent tutorial for Jazzpunk. Get the load remover from our Discord server. Very friendly group of people. They're really awesome. Uh, and I recommend coming down and helping us break this game even more. Because there are certainly a few things that could be more optimised, I imagine. Uh, that alt tab was really recent discovery. The golf skips were a really recent discovery. Yeah. Anyway, and yeah, it's been a really interesting tutorial, I think. Thank you very much for watching. If you've watched this far, I really hope that it helps. I really hope that you get into speedrunning this game, because it's one of my favourite games I've ever considered speedrunning. It's one of my favourite video games casually as well. Weirdly, uh, it's just a fantastic video game. Can't thank you enough, and I can't thank this community enough for their amazing commitment to this game over the years. And thank you, Angle Meerkat. The time ends as soon as you take these pills at the end of the run, and the credits will begin in a moment. That's pretty much it. If you have any comments, again, leave them in the comments section. I think goes without saying. It's pretty late, so I'm going to head off. <laughs> I'll see you guys in another video. Probably will be painting sand red related. If you're now sticking around for my post video ramble that I do on my channel, uh, you're probably not. But I'll see you soon. Thank you very much for watching again.